You've seen Squid Game, I've seen Squid Game. We're making the piggy bank. Let's do it. None of the modeling that I'm doing for this project is very complicated, and you can pretty easily see everything that I'm doing on screen. So instead of describing every little thing, I will instead tell you a bit about the process. So I went into this project thinking that it was going to be done in a month and super easy, but the only thing that was actually easy was the modeling. I start off each project the same by getting screenshots from every angle I can possibly get, because the more angles I have, the more accurate the finished product will be. You can see the screenshots I got in the background, which I switched through while modeling. As I was editing the intro, I saw a new angle of the piggy bank that I hadn't seen before. It showed the eyes better, and I realized that the eyes were actually more of an oval than an elongated circle. But I can't do anything about that now because the whole project's done. But it's really no big deal. I actually kind of like how I did the eyes better, and hopefully you do too. As I was making the hardware, I noticed in the screenshots, which you can see here, that they use two different piggy banks throughout the show. One that's CGI and one that's real. The real one is on the left and it appears to have two plastic discs instead of the one plastic disc and one metal disc that the CGI model has. I decided that since I'm making it real, I would follow the real one and have two plastic discs. You didn't see me model any of these little metal hardware pieces because I actually got them off of a McMaster car type website. If you've never been on McMaster car, it's a website that offers nuts and bolts and all sorts of small fasteners. And what's great is that they have all the 3D models there for free. What you see me making here are guides so that once all the pieces are printed out, I have a little tool to help me put all of the pieces in the exact right spots. Of course, a piggy bank wouldn't be complete without some money, and with that, the modeling is done.
All right, time to get everything laid out for printing. I decided that the piggy bank would be six inches in diameter, which is why you see me split it in half. I really wanted the hole at the top of the piggy bank to come out sharp, which is why you see me adding so many supports. Here's the rest of all the little pieces laid out, as well as those guides I'd mentioned earlier. When it came time to coloring the resin, I figured it would take about one liter to print everything. So to do a test, I measured 100 milliliters into a cup, which would tell me a tenth of the dye that I needed for the one liter jar. It might look a little dark now, but keep in mind, almost all of the parts will only be two millimeters thick, which is about the thickness you see on that piece of plastic. Oh gosh, not the carpet. Yeah, it's like the 10 second rule, but reversed because it was for the carpet. What I'm saying is the carpet's fine. You can see all the little dimples left behind by removing the supports. So what you see me doing is adding just a little bit of resin and curing it so that those little dimples get filled in and I can sand it smooth. To sand and polish the body, I used a 3M headlight restoration kit. Except for the polishing compound, I instead used the Mother's brand which gave a better result. As you'll see in the next clip, there's a little line of bubbles that run down both halves of the piggy bank. I wasn't sure why this happened, so I googled it and didn't really get any answers other than that it was happening to others as well. If you know why this is happening, let me know down in the comments section below.
At only two millimeters thick, it was quite bendy and just wouldn't go together the first time. Which I was clearly pretty happy about. These little stacks of cash were quite time consuming to make, so I didn't get to make as many as I'd like. 